This video is sponsored by JD Outdoor Adventures, South Florida's number one shop for everything fly fishing. All right. So I just whipped up a couple of my uh, tarpon flies. But now I'm gonna get ready to tie up something new. Something new. Gonna be fishing the west side of Biscayne Bay. Those bonefish eat a little bit. Darker stuff, you know, it's darker bottom, almost a tannic look to the water. So I like to throw whether it's like olive and orange colors for the flies. It's a little bit darker, it's a little buggier. So I'm gonna go with uh, orange thread for this fly. I'm gonna get my bobbin. I got a threader here to thread the bobbin, makes it a lot easier. Got my black bead chain too. I'm gonna use a size 4 B10S stinger. My favorite hook, uh, specifically for bonefish in the size 4, works really well. Some guys tie size 6, but the bonefish out here in Miss Cam Bay are pretty big and it's hard to keep them on with a size 6. I found I lose a lot of fish. Even with a size 4, sometimes if it's a really big bonefish, they end up getting away. So I'm gonna thread the bobbin. That's what you wanna do. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys already know how to thread a bobbin, but for anybody that doesn't, put it on there. You have a little threading tool, which is so much easier than trying to pull the thread through using other methods, but. Push this through the threading tool and just pull it right through the bobbin. Very easy, so much faster. So I'm going to start off with my base wrap. So I haven't really fished the west side in a long time. So I'm going to try to tie up a variation of what I used to tie back in the day for them there. A lot of tan and orange combinations always worked really well. A lot of the flies for the west side you tie are smaller. Like the Electric Dread, very popular fly from uh, Cordell Baum. Arctic Fox, some uh, Arctic Fox tail in orange, again west side fish, I'm trying to tie something in orange because that color tends to do really well out there. I'm going to come now with these uh, orange and pumpkin yellow silly legs, very similar to another bonefish fly. legs off. Stack it about the middle of the fly. One, two, three, four. Fold it back over. Secure that on there with a few wraps. Bard Hackle. out of the way. 
So I'm using my hackle tool to grab the tip of the hackle. This makes it a lot easier to palmer the hackle forward. Work this thread forward a little bit first. To about right there. As you palmer forward, you want to brush the hackle back. Once you cut it, the little pieces of metal stay inside and they rattle around there. It kind of acts, it kind of sounds like a shrimp moving in the water or a crab when they're moving their little claws around. So it really draws the attention of the fish. So you want to figure eight these on and do uh, eight wraps in one direction, eight wraps in the other. And then I go with the actual figure eight around the eyes. the thread back to the collar that I created with the hackle. As you can see right there. Now we get a tan and brown tarantula. This is one inch EP tarantula brush. It's tan with little brown legs in it. And you're going to want to start this up. Normally I would use a little bit more of this stuff push it further back to create that collar but since I went with the hackle collar on this one you don't need as many turns three you can keep pushing it back as you uh as you wind it on off the top of this it's just gonna really it's gonna want to make the fly right hook shank up better because there's less material on this side the side with the more material is gonna want to fluff up and float a little bit more it's gonna help the fly right hook up better I'm gonna trim that flat kind of taper it back I'm gonna use some Cortland 50 pound for the weed guard. This stuff's really tough. You're gonna fold it like a U. Kind 
of pinch it. Go over the hook. Wrap four times loose in front of it. And pull it down nice and snug. Now I wrap it three times behind it. Cross it. So you grab your whip finisher. Do two whip finishes with four turns. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. That's pretty much it. Now what you want to do is trim off the silly legs so you break them free because they come stuck to each other. Kind of want to trim it off about the same length of the foxtail fur. There you have it. This is a very shrimpy orange and tan for the west side of Biscayne Bay. Pretty much for working anywhere that you have tannic water for anything that eats a shrimp or a crab. Redfish will eat this. West side of Biscayne Bay is very orange bottom, yellow bottom. A lot of dark spots. With darker water, you get a lot of fresh water runoff from the canals. So the water's a lot more tannic. So the bait and shrimp is a little more orange in color. So that's when I'll toss this fly at them. Sometimes instead of using orange foxtail fur, I'll use orange barred hackle for the tail. It works really well. That is that. Let me trim this down a little bit. You want to trim the weed guard so that it's just at the tip of the hook. You don't want to go too high because then a fish will feel it when they eat the fly and they spit it out. But just so it'll block any weeds from hooking onto the hook. Kind of pulling away to the sides. Might go ahead and trim it up a little bit here. Just create a nice taper effect. Create a nice taper effect so the water moves nicely off of it. So I got a black prisma color. I'm gonna turn it upside down because this allows the city legs to hang down. You wanna pull this straight. You want you to do that. Make sure you hit the top, the bottom, and the side, both sides. Kind of work it in because there's a lot of material there, and then you space it. The same thing, top, bottom, both sides. Again. And then you just slide it through. Really gets the ink in there. Check that out. Now it's a little bit more shrimpy. Looks a little more natural. Let's do it. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.